السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام حي على السلام حي على الفناء إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مدل له وما يدلل فلا حادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما الرجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الذي تساءلون به والأرهام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استاك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في الله verily all the praise and certainly all of the magnification and certainly all of the dedication it is due to Allah and Allah alone and I publicly I inwardly and I outwardly declare and attest and profess that there is nothing or no one la ma'bu bi haqqin illa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that al Mustafa al Amin al Sadiq wal Masduq Abu Qasim alayhi salatu taslim is the last and final messengers to give guidance to the world and you and me my dear brothers in Islam and the one on your own, the topic for today, be ibni lahi ta'ala. It is a topic that I myself have been doing some maraji, reading from the kutub of the ulama. I've been going back and reading the, taf the tafsir of the ulama, ya khwan, and wallahi, each time you look and you see what the scholars left for us, kanz mina kunuz, ya khwan. Treasures upon treasures, ya khwan. Our topic for today, uh, and the one on your own, is islah al qulub ya khwan. Mending and repairing, and rectifying the hearts. And we have to begin, Ya Khwan, with that ayah where Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, and I say firstly, A'udhu Bilana Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Ala Nashrah Laka Sadrak. Every Muslim knows this surah, Ya Khwan. But when you go and you read the tafsir, that's when these things, they start to open up for you, Bani Lai Ta'ala. From the Mufassirin, they want to say that this ayah, it means for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
Have we not opened your breast, your heart for you? Meaning al-Iman, meaning al-Nabuwa, meaning al-Ilm, and meaning al-Hikmah, ya Akhwan. And this is where the discussion goes into great discussion from the ulama, ya Akhwan. Is it two times or is it three times that his heart was opened up? And there's some discussion going back and forth amongst the scholars, ya Akhwan, and I found the answer, alhamdulillah. So we find, ya Akhwan, that the opening of the chest of the Prophet sallallahu it points to a number of important meanings. Number one, Ya Akhwan, that Allah Azza wa Jal put the Iman and the Deen in his heart. And this is the, this is the interpretation of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, you can read this in Kitab al-Tafsir, Ya Akhwan. So the first thing is, Ya Akhwan, Allah Azza wa Jal, he put Iman, he put Hikmah, he put Nubuwa, he put Ilm in the Prophet Sallallahu heart. So we're talking about, Ya Akhwan, reviving the heart after death. Many Muslims I've met, their heart has become dead, Ya Akhwan. Muslims incarcerated, filling the jails after they memorize the whole Quran, Ya Akhwan. It shows you that we have some hearts that are diseased. Also, we find, Ya Akhwan, that the scholars from amongst them, Shaykh Uthameen, Rahimahullah, he went on to say that this particular meaning of this ayah, he went on to say that it is metaphorical, not physical. This ayah here we're talking about. The opening of the heart may be done so that it is able to receive the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both in the shari decrees as well as the deen, ya akhwan. But now the question comes, ya akhwan, what about the other two explanations? We find, ya akhwan, that Allah, as we tell, he opened the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And many great scholars like Hassan al-Basri, they mention, ya akhwan, that the opening of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it happened twice in his life. So there is a metaphorical and there is an actual physical opening of the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first occurred, Ya Akhwan, the first occurred when the Prophet Sallallahu was living amongst Banu Sa'd. And we find that it is narrated by Anas ibn Malik that he went on to say that Jibril came to the Messenger Sallallahu when he was, Ya Akhwan, playing with other little boys. And he took hold of him and he threw him to the ground and then he opened up his chest and he took out his heart in which there was a blood clot. And he said, this is the portion that the shaitan shared of you. Then he washed it in a vessel of gold and he filled it with zamza. And then he put it back into the chest of the Prophet The boys went and they said, Muhammad has been killed. Muhammad has been killed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when the people came to him, they found that his color had changed, ya akhwan. This hadith is narrated in Imam Muslim. The second occurred, my dear brothers, inshallah, make space for your brothers that are trying to get in. The second occurred in the night of Isra' wal Muraj, ya akhwan. Abu Dhar narrated to the to <coughs> Abu Dhar narrated that the Prophet up, that he said that the roof of my house was open when I was in Mecca. And Jibril alayhi salam, he came down and he split open my chest. Then he washed it with Zamza. Then he brought it with a golden basin filled with wisdom, hikmah, and iman. And then he emptied this into my chest. Then he sealed it. This is narrated in Bukhari Muslim. So Ya Ahwan, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak. So, Ya Akhwan, the question is, is our hearts, are they open? Are our hearts open, Ya Akhwan? Are our hearts open, Ya Akhwan? We look at the situation, Islah al qulub I know I need to make some rectification of my heart, Ya Akhwan. Growing up in this society here, running the streets when I was young, running with my crew, Alhamdulillah, Allah, He gave me the Hidayah back in 1991 to become a Muslim, Ya Akhwan. And since then, Ya Akhwan, I've seen the Muslims Choose the lifestyle that I used to be in back in the days of Jahaliyyah, Ya Akhwan. And I'm telling you, it's as if sometimes, Ya Akhwan, the new Muslim, they come into Islam and they're going this way, and the born Muslim is going this way, Ya Akhwan. Turn back around and go back to Allah's Wajal. So we find, Ya Akhwan, we are talking about Islah al qulub Islah al qulub Islah al qulub Ya Akhwan. In English, look at all the words that one of the sheikhs, he said in English, he said it means rectification. It means reformation, it means mending, healing, repair, restoration, rebuilding, rebuilding and fixing, and rehabilitation and resuscitation, Ya Akhwan. Resuscitation, Ya Akhwan. So when we look at the situation, Allah Ta'ala, He says to the believers, Fi kudubihim marada, fazadahum Allahu marada. Ya Akhwan, this is not just for the kufar, or for the munafiqeen, this could be for me and you, my dear brothers, that a small disease will come into the heart and change you from the people of Iman to the people of Kufr. So my dear brothers, there are some hadith that the Prophet ﷺ, he narrated to us. 
showing us, Ya Akhwan, the importance of this heart rebuilding, Ya Akhwan. Qala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this hadith is collected in Imam Muslim, and that wording, Ya Akhwan, in these hadith is different, showing the eloquence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ سُورِكُمْ وَلَاكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ This hadith, Ya Akhwan, is in Muslim. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, Allah, He does not look at your figures, whether you're a big strong man, a fat man, a skinny man, a black man, a white man, a rich man, Allah doesn't look at that. Rather, He does not even look at how fly you look, the clothes that you wear, Allah doesn't look at that. But He looks at your hearts, and he looks at your deeds, my dear brothers. And the other narration is also in Imam Muslim, where the Prophet wanted to say, In the Allah la yanduru ila suwarikum wa amwalikum wa lakin yanduru ila kulubikum wa a'malikum ya akhwan. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wanted to say, Allah, he does not look at your appearance or your wealth, but rather he looks at your hearts. And he looks at your actions, Yahweh. In the month of Ramadan, Yahweh, imagine I have witnessed with my eyes going to buy coffee late in the night at some places, Muslims smoking on hookah in the night of Ramadan. I have seen Muslims selling drugs in the month of Ramadan. I have seen Muslims not giving salam to their brothers in the month of Ramadan. So yeah, if this is our condition now, what happens when the shayateen, the big ones, they come out and they start to corrupt our hearts with more waswasa, yeah, We find yeah, in the beautiful hadith, and yeah, I myself, I just learned this hadith recently. This hadith, yeah, it is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, and it's on the authority of Anis bin Malik. We want to say, Qala Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La yastaqimu imanu abdin hatta yastaqima Qalbahu, wala yastaqimu qalbahu hatta yastaqima lisanahu, wala yadkhudu rajlu jannah la ya'manu jarruhu duwa'ikahu. Wa kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the iman, the faith of a servant, it is not upright until his heart is upright. And his heart is not upright until his tongue is not upright. And a man will not enter paradise if his neighbor is not secure from his evil. We have found, Ya Akhwan, Muslim children, Muslim children hijacking and carjacking, going into Muslim neighborhoods in the barrels and stealing the cars of Muslims during the month of Ramadan. That's how serious it is, my dear brothers. So the question comes, Ya Akhwan, our hearts open our car parts closed, probably going to have some to make some of the for some of the Alhamdulillah, Hamdin Kathir and Payyib and Mubarak and Feek, my Shibu Rabuna, my Yardra, Father Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وإن في جسد المضغى إذا صلحت صلح جسد كله وإذا فسد فسد جسد كله وحي القلب. There is a morsel or piece of flesh in the body that if it is whole, it becomes good. But if it's spoiled, then the whole body becomes spoiled and barely that is the heart of the So yet while I'm doing research yet while it is something that I love to do to purchase books so there's a book called Al-Qutuf. And this Qutuf has everything in it. It has tafsir in it, it has the shurahat of hadith, it has antidotes in it, it has poetry in it, and it even has points of hikmah in it. And from it, the Shaykh went on to say when he wrote this Qutuf, he said, وَجَمِيبُ الْقُلُوبِ وَيُكَنَّ عَنِ الْعَقَلْ وَفَحْمِ وَبَصَرِ بِقَلْبِ He went on to say, Ya Akhwan, that in terms of the Islamic hearts, the kulub, it is often used as a metaphor to refer more to just the physical organ. It encompasses the inner self, including the mind, the intellect, including the insight, the spiritual perception, 
This also, this concept is deeply rooted in the Islamic teachings where the heart is considered the focus of belief, the focus of iman. The niyyah, the intention, the moral and the spiritual awareness, ya akhwan. Taqwa, taqwa. I said to some brothers this month, itaqila ya akhi. Who are you to tell me, ya akhi, itaqila? You itaqila, jazakila khair. Thank you, I need to fear Allah, but you should also fear Allah too. Muslims are getting upset if you tell them, to be mindful of Allah and fear Allah Azza wa The Shaykh is saying that achieving the true faith, wisdom, and the deeper comprehension of the religious truth, the heart's condition is directly linked to one's spiritual state and his ability to conceive and connect with the divine guidance. The book of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ya Ikhwan. Ya Ikhwan, I went the other day for Qiyam and I seen the Muslims listen to the whole book of Allah. And I didn't see anybody crying, I didn't see anybody shedding, but when the Imam started making dua about the condition of the Muslims, eyes were flowing, ya akhwan, with tears. If the book of Quran, the book of Allah, if it's not moving us, ya akhwan, to begin with, we have some issues. And ya akhwan, it is a central person's development in his moral integrity, ya akhwan. So the heart listens best, ya akhwan, when it is away from distractions. These cell phones are distracting us, ya akhwan. In the Josie, he said something so powerful, ya akhwan. He wanted to say, how can the heart sleep in tranquility while not knowing whether or not it will dwell in hell or it will be in the heavens? And Ibn Masood, he wanted to say, the one who does not possess a heart that once used to recognize good from evil, they are destroyed. At one time, some Muslims, they used to pray. They used to fast. Now we've met some people that are from Muslim families eating during the month of Ramadan. They say, well, I used to be Muslim. They left from the lands of the Muslims to come to the lands of the Kufar. And they left Islam. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us Islam, us, us new people from the streets. Inshallah ta'ala, we have a few more narrations, my dear brothers, taken from <coughs> Miftah, Abdallah Sa'ada. Ibn Qayyid went on to say, from the affairs that cause happiness is the light that Allah places in the heart of a servant, which is the light of Iman. Al-Iman qawlun bin lisan wa tasdiqan bin qalb wa amr bin jawai. Iman it is a statement firmly fixed on the tongue. It is a belief that is firmly cemented in the heart and it is actions upon the limbs. And even to me, I want to say, my paradise is in my chest. What can my enemies do to me? My exile, being kicked out of the country, it is a journey for me. My imprisonment is to be alone in khalwa, worshiping Allah. And killing me is the shahada, is martyrdom, ya akhwan. And the last quote for today, being light ta'ala, and there was so much to take from ya akhwan. Believe me, this is only a few chapters from the books of the ulama. You know, Qayyim wanted to say, if this light is lost from the servant's heart, then it is miserable, and it is annoyed, and it ends up in the most distressful of all prisons, ya akhwan. Brothers, just recently, some Muslims, they have been committing suicide. <coughs> suicide, ya akhwan. Meaning that they lost hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. We as Muslims can never, ever lose hope in Allah Azza wa Jal, ya akhwan. If we lose hope in Allah, then we've lost hope in ourselves. With that, keep us alive, we want to let our shaykh in because he is the shaykh. We want to let him lead us alive in the night. Assalamu alaikum. Keep us alive.